Let's go. Hi there. My name is Sebastian Witowski, and I work as a Python consultant, freelancer, and trainer. So as part of my job, I join different teams and work on different projects. As I work on those different projects, I notice that they often suffer from one of two problems. They are either over-engineered or over-simplified. Well, over-engineered or stuck in the 90s. Um, the over-engineered ones involve jumping on every shiny new toy that you find on the first page of Hacker News. And then everyone gets excited because, well, it's fun to work with something brand new. What is not fun is when this tool gets deprecated. Maybe its creator got bored and they stopped working on it. And now you have to either fork it and maintain it yourself or you have to replace it. On the other hand, we have projects that are still stuck in the 90s. Some people think that because it was fine to use bar scripts for everything back then, it's fine to keep using bar scripts today. It's fun if you're a hardcore Linux user and you love writing bar scripts, but to be honest, when was the last time you wrote one? Okay, writing them from scratch is not that bad. Maintaining a bar script that someone else wrote for you is much harder. And I don't mean that bar scripts are bad. They're actually pretty great for simple things. It's just you should use tools that are more suitable for the task at hand. Neither of this situation is good. You should update your tools, but at the same time, you should choose those tools that are proven and you know that they will be around for a few years. So that's why I've decided to make this presentation. I want to show you some useful Python tools that will make your life easier. Tools that I recommend to my colleagues and to my clients. We'll talk about things that a lot of beginner programmers struggle with at some point. First, I will show you how to install different Python versions on your computer using a tool called PyEnv. Next, I will talk about Python dependencies. I will explain you what are virtual environments, how they work, and why you need them if you work with multiple Python projects. I will also compare the built-in VNV module with some external tools like the virtual env wrapper. And finally, we will talk about tool called pipx. This is a great tool if you want to install some Python package globally, but you still want to isolate it from other packages on your computer. And before we move on, I want to highlight one thing. Those are all just tools, and there are a lot of other tools that do similar things. If you're using something else, that's great. My goal here is not to convince you that those are the best tools, no. I just want to show you how to solve some basic problems when you configure your development environment. If, for example, you are using Conda and you are happy with it, then first two bullet points on this list are actually already solved for you, and that's perfectly fine. But if you don't know what to use, let me show you some recommendations. First, let's talk about installing Python on your computer. Depending on your operating system, your computer might already come with some version of Python installed. If you're using Mac OS, it comes with Python 2.7. If you're using Linux, then the Python version depends on which distribution you are using. And in Windows 10, you don't have any Python. Let's say that your operating system comes with some Python version. This Python version already installed on your computer is often called System Python. And no matter which system Python you have, I strongly suggest that you don't use it. In many cases, as we saw, for example, with Mac OS, it's terribly outdated. Python 2.7 is no longer officially supported by the core developers, and hopefully you're not using it since a long time. Hmm. You might be tempted to update system Python to Python 3, but you probably have some problem programs on your computer that depends on this Python 2.7. You would be surprised how many programs or even parts of the operating system still requires Python 2.7, at least on Mac OS. If you update system Python, those programs will stop working. So if you change the Python version that comes pre-installed on your operating system, you risk that your computer will stop working. And that is not fun. I have done this in the past when I was young and I didn't know much about programming or op operating systems. And instead of a fast update, I had to reinstall everything from scratch. So my advice here is to leave the system Python alone and pretend that it doesn't exist. 
So no matter what operating system you have, you will have to install Python. And there are many different ways how you can do this. You can go to the python.org website and download the installer for your operating system. You can use a package manager like Homebrew or on Mac OS or apt-get on Linux. And you can even compile Python from the source files. However, my favorite way of installing Python that I have been using for a few years already is to use a tool called PyEnv. PyEnv is a tool for managing Python versions. You can use it to easily install new Python version and to quickly switch between the versions that you already have installed. It might not be a big deal if you only use one Python version all the time, but if you're working with multiple Python projects that require multiple Python versions, this tool is extremely useful. For example, when I do some Python tutorials or courses, I usually try to use the latest version of Python. But when I work with my clients, they usually don't have the latest version of Python, so I have to switch between them. I've been using Python for years and it works very well. If you work with different programming languages, then you might recognize similar tools that work in the exact same way as PyN. For example, there is RBN for Ruby, NodeN for Node.js, or GoN for Go. While PyEnv will work on macOS and Linux, if you're using Windows, check out PyEnv Win. It's a port of PyEnv to Windows. It might not have all the features that the standard PyEnv has, but it has all the essential ones that I will talk about. But then again, if you're on Windows and you are a happy Conda user, there is really no point in switching to PyEnv. One of the things that Conda can do is to create a virtual environment with different Python version, which already covers two out of three tools in this talk. So you can install PyEnv with Homebrew, you can clone it with Git and then manually set up a few things, or you can use the PyEnv installer tool. And while this last option requires you to download a bar script from the internet and run it in your terminal, which is a big security no, 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 it's actually very convenient. It will install not only PyEnv, but also some useful plugins like the PyEnv Doctor that you can use, for example, to check that your installation is set up correctly. Once you have PyEnv installed, uh, you can use it to install new Python versions. To see a list of which versions you can install, you can run PyEnv install dash dash list. And you will see a huge list of available Python installations. At the top, we have the standard C Python versions. But then we have something else like Anaconda, Active Python, Miniconda, PyPy, and so on. So all those different types of Python can be also installed with PyEnv. If you ever wanted to try PyPy, now you can very easily do this. Once you select a version from this list that you want to install, you can type PyEnv install and the name or the version number, and then you can go make yourself coffee. I mean it, the installation usually takes a few minutes. There are some additional libraries like OpenSSL that you can pre-install to make this process faster. If you don't have them, PyEnv will try to download them each time you install a new Python version. So I suggest you take a look at the GitHub documentation. Once this is done, you can run PyEnv versions to see if this new version was installed correctly. And we can see this on the list, so it means that we are all set. Now we have to tell PyEnv to use that version. And for that, we have to choose one of three different levels at where we want to change the Python version. So we can say global, local, or shell. What does it mean? Well, nine out of 10 times, you will probably want to change the global Python version. And to do that, you can just run PyEnv global 3.9.0, and from now on, you are using Python 3.9. Then we have PyEnv local. So imagine that most of the time you are working with Python 3.9, but you have this one project on your computer that still requires Python 3.7. And for some reason, it won't work with any other Python version. So instead of changing the global Python version to 3.7 each time you work on this project and then changing it back to 3.9 when you stop working on this project, you can set up a local Python version. So that's where the PyEnv local command comes in. 
you can run pine of local 3.7 or 3.9 and this will set a version for the current folder and all its subfolders so whenever you go inside this folder python version will change to the local version but when you go outside you will be using the global one this is very handy when you work with multiple projects that each requires a different Python version. So instead of changing the global Python version back and forth, you just have to run pi and local in each of those folders. And now when you go inside any of the project A or project B folder, pi and will automatically change the Python version for you. And finally, we have pyenv shell that changes the Python version of your current shell session. You might want to use this in a situation when you temporarily want to change which Python version you are using. For example, maybe you want to run some code that still uses Python 2. So all you have to do is to run pyenv shell 2.7.18, and now you are using Python 2. But once you open a new session in your terminal, you are back to using the previous Python version. So that's how you can easily manage Python versions on your computer. Let's talk about the dependencies in your projects. Let's start with pip. Pip is a package manager for Python. Whenever you want to install a new package, all you have to do is to run pip install and a package name. However, pip has one big problem. Whenever you ask it to install a specific version of Python package, it will uninstall the previous version from your computer and install the one that you ask for. Let me show you an example of what I mean. Imagine you are a Django web developer and you want to build a Django website. Well, you can use whatever different framework. Let's stick with Django for now. So you start by installing the latest version of Django by running pip install Django and that installs Django 3. Everything works great. You build an awesome website and the website is so awesome that a client or your boss or maybe your colleague comes to you and says, hey, you're building awesome websites and I have a Django website. Can you help me fix it? Well, as it often happens with clients, their Django website is not using the latest Django. It's still running, let's say, Django 2.2. So you install that specific version by running pip install Django equals equals 2.2. Pip does what you asked for. And after a few seconds, you start working on your client's website using Django 2.2. So far, so good. But later that day, you discover a bug on your personal website, the one that you created with Django 3. You quickly fix the code, but when you try to test if it's working correctly, you get an error message saying Django 3 is not installed. Like, what? I mean, we installed it yesterday. So what happened? Well, when we told Pip to install Django 2.2, Pip, Pip first checked if we already have Django installed. And we did, but it wasn't version 2.2. So Pip uninstalled this version from our computer and installed the correct one we just run into a problem with dependencies management. We have this problem because pip installs Python packages inside the site packages folder and puts each package in a separate folder named after that package. So Django tree is placed inside site packages slash Django, but when you want to install Django 2, it will also be placed inside site packages slash Django. So pip has to first remove what's inside the Django folder and then install a different version of Django. If you only work with one Python project on your computer, then you're probably not affected by this problem. But sooner or later, you will need to install different versions of the same package, and you are going to run into issues with pip uninstalling the previous dependencies. The problem with pip is that it installs all the packages in the same folder. So how about we tell pip to temporarily install package to a different folder, and then we tell our Python interpreter to use that different folder instead? Well, that's exactly what the virtual environment does. A virtual environment is a folder that contains a Python installation and any additional package that you install. When you activate a virtual environment, two things happen. 
first we tell pip to install any new package into that folder. And then we tell Python interpreter to use packages from that folder. So now if we try to install some Python package, pip won't uninstall the previous version from the global site packages folder because it's not using the global site packages. It's using the local site package specific to this virtual environment. So how does it look in practice? Well, first we need to create a virtual environment. Python has a built-in module called vnv to manage virtual environments, so we don't even have to install anything. We create a new virtual environment with python minus m vnv and then the name of the virtual environment. So in this case, I'm creating a folder called .vnv inside the current directory. .vnv or vnv are both a common convention for naming your virtual environment folder. This makes it obvious that whatever is inside this folder, it's related to virtual environments, but it also has another benefit. Some code editors like PyCharm or VS Code will recognize this folder as a virtual environment and they will automatically start using it. Okay, we have created a virtual environment. Now we have to activate it. Inside our VN folder, we have a bin directory and there we have the activate script. Since this is a bar script, we have to run it with source. If you're using a different shell, then there are also different files that you can use. For example, there is activate.bat for Windows users. Once you activate it, you should, you, sorry, you should see a difference in your prompt. So now you will see that in parentheses, you have the VN, which is the name of the current virtual environment. So if you see something like that, that's great because it means that the virtual environment is active. Now we do everything that you would do as you're building a Python project. If you install a Python package with pip, it will be installed inside this virtual environment. And if you run a Python script, it will have access to Python packages from this virtual environment. And if you want to stop using a virtual environment, you just need to run the activate command. When you call the activate, it will revert all the changes that activate command did. So you will go back to using the global Python version and global pip packages. So a typical workflow using virtual environments involves creating a one virtual environment for each of your projects. So if you're working with two different Django projects, you first create one virtual environment, you activate it, you install Django tree and you start coding. And then you create a different virtual environment, you activate it, you install Django 2.2, and you start using it. VNF module is perfectly fine for managing virtual environments, but I want to show you another tool that I have been using for a long time. It's called Virtual End Wrapper, and it comes with a lot of cool features that makes working with virtual environments much easier. You can install it with pip, and it works on macOS and Linux. For Windows users, you can use Virtual End Wrapper Win that works pretty much the same. But then again, if you're a happy Conda user, you can stick to managing that for virtual environments. Virtual end wrapper stores all the virtual environments inside the .vnfs folder in your home directory. And it provides you with some convenient method for managing virtual environments. So you can create a new virtual environment using mkvirtualenv command. So if you run mkvirtualenv django to app, it will create a virtual environment, but it will create it in your home directory in this VNFs folder, not in the current folder. If you want to activate a virtual environment, you just have to call work on and the name of the environment. So work on django to app. You don't have to type the whole path to the activation script. Virtual env will figure out which activation script to use based on the name of the virtual environment. And if you forgot the name of the virtual environment, you can just run ls virtual env, and this will give you a list of all the existing environments. With vnv, it's impossible to get the list of all your virtual environments because vnv doesn't store this information. With virtual env wrapper, since all your virtual environments live in the same folder, you can very easily get that list. And then finally, to remove a virtual environment, you just call rm virtual env and the name of the environment. So now you're probably wondering which one is better, vnv or virtual wrapper. Well, 
both tools are really great. And it really boils down to how you like to use your virtual environments. I use virtual env mostly because I don't like to type this whole source vn slash bin slash activate, where of course half of the time I'm in like subfolder of my project and I get an error saying that folder vn doesn't exist. So I had to figure out what's the actual path. No, I just want to type work on Django tree app and be done with it. And also I sometimes create a virtual environments that are not connected to any specific project. For example, I have one virtual environment with a bunch of data science library that I use every time that I need to run Jupyter with pandas or NumPy. And also virtual env has uh, some cool features. For example, you can create a temporary virtual environment that will be deleted when you deactivate it. So this is quite handy when you want to quickly test some Python package. But VNV module also has some benefits. If you store virtual environment together with your project, then your code editor will automatically pick it up. And when you delete this project, you automatically also delete the virtual environment. Plus VNV is a built-in module, so you don't have to install anything. All right, we covered how to manage Python packages in our projects. What about global packages on your computer? Some tools are much more convenient to use when you install them globally instead of installing them in each of your projects. For example, the code formatter black, the code linter flake eight, or even the virtual end wrapper that we just saw. We want to use those packages across all our projects or even when we are outside of any specific project. For example, we would use the virtual end wrapper to actually create a virtual environment before we start working on a project. But again, if two tools require a different version of the same dependency, we have a problem. You install one tool and everything works fine. You install the second tool, it changes some versions of this first tool, and then the first tool stops working. We could install each of those tools into a separate virtual environment, but that's a lot of hassle to use it like that. Each time we would have to activate it, run, maybe one command and then remember to deactivate it. I mean, you can do this, but it's a lot of typing and in general, it's a waste of time. We can easily solve this problem using a tool called pipx. pipx installs Python packages inside separate virtual environments, but at the same time, those packages act as if they are installed globally. So you don't have to manually activate any environments to use them. How does it look in practice? Let's say I want to install black to format some Python code. I run pipx install black, and after a few seconds, I get a success message saying that black has been installed on my computer. And now I can use those three commands, black, black primer, and black D. Now I use black as if it was installed with pip. It doesn't matter if I'm inside a virtual environment or not. I will always use this global package. I don't have to activate anything. I just run the same commands as I would run if I didn't use pipx. And if I want to install a different version of black inside my virtual environment, I can always do this. This black from inside of a virtual environment will take precedence over the global black, and it will be used as long as I'm inside the virtual environment. So what else can we do with pipx? We can list all install packages with pipx list. So we'll see which commands we can run. We can uninstall a package and this will also clean up its virtual environment. We can upgrade all the packages with one command called pipx upgrade all. And there is also one very useful command called pipx inject. It will install a pip package inside the virtual environment of another package. You might use it, for example, if you want to install a plugin for PyTest. So let's say we want to add a PyTest cough plugin to display the test coverage of our code. We can't just run pipx install PyTest cough because it will install PyTest cough inside a separate virtual environment and PyTest won't see this package. Again, we have, we, we have this kind of a problem because pipx installs everything into separate environment. So we can call pipx inject, and this will install pytest cough plugin inside the same virtual environment as pytest is using. 
And that brings me to the end of my presentation. So let's quickly summarize what we saw. First, use PyEnv to install new Python versions. Once you set it up, it's really easy to install new Python versions and switch between them. Then use virtual environments when you work on different projects and you want to isolate their dependencies. Always make sure to create a separate virtual environment for each of your projects. Python comes with a built-in VNF module, but if you prefer a tool with some additional functionality, the virtual N wrapper is a really great choice. And finally, if you want to install some tools globally, you can use PIP outside of a virtual environment, but you risk that if there is some version conflict, they won't work together. So a much better tool to use is PIPX that will install each package in a separate virtual environment, but for you, there won't be any difference in how you use them. And even though this is the end of my presentation, I realized that I only scratched the surface of how to efficiently build Python projects. So if you enjoy this talk and you want to learn more, I have made an online course called Modern Python Projects, where I talk about this and other tools that you can use to build some really nice Python development setup. Plus, it talks about things like writing tests, documentation, setting up continuous integration. It has some examples of how to build PyPI package, CLI tool, how to deploy a Python application. And there is even a chapter on how to set up VS Code to work with Python. So if you want to learn more, you can check it out at modernpythonprojects.com. And that's really all I have for you today. Thank you very much for listening. And I think we have some time for questions. Yep. Awesome. Let me get to the first one. Is it possible to install Python using PyNV without root access? That's a good question. And I think, yes, I have never used computer without the root access, <laughs> so I'm not sure how they work. But basically how PyNV works is that it will change your path environment variable and it will put itself at the beginning of the path. So it will have a folder in your home directory where you will install Python versions. And because of modifying the path, it will use those versions. So it's completely un independent of the system Python. So if you mess up something, you can always just remove this folder and you will go back to the global Python. Can we create a virtual ENV using some other already created virtual ENV? I know that Conda has this feature. I don't think that VNF has it. I'm not sure about virtual and wrapper. So I know that for, I know for sure Conda has this feature. I don't know about the others. Hmm. Okay. There are a couple of more. Let me pick one or two. How does VENV or virtual ENV wrapper know which Python version to pick when creating a virtual ENV? They will pick up the one that is currently in use. So, I mean, they will pick the version of Python that is being used when you type Python in your terminal. But I think there are some options to point it to a different version. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Coda for sure has it, VN also has it. You can provide a different Python binary. Uh, probably, okay, we are out of time. So thank you so much, Sebastian, for a great talk. Thank you so uh, much for having me.